warm welcome to all present here today for the Changemaker 20 Summit, where visionaries and change agents unite to catalyze global transformation. Through collaboration and innovation, we embark on a journey to address challenges, inspire action, and forge a path to a brighter tomorrow. Together, we shape the future we aspire to see. Distinguished guests and esteemed participants, I am Anupma Thakur, and with great pleasure, I welcome you to our esteemed speaker, Ronak. Ghosh is a CSR and Partnership Consultant at Deshpande Foundation. Drawing from his expertise in economic research, wetland ecosystems, media and languages, armed with a bachelor's degree in economics, math and statistics from Christ College, his analytical foundation is strong. His educational journey continued with a master's in linguistics showcasing his linguistic prowess. Outside of his professional role, Ronak's passion reflects his multifaceted nature. A staunch advocate for climate awareness, he intervenes this with his creative spirit through art, photography, and a constant quest to learn new languages. Ronak's profile is a testament to his diverse skill set and unwavering dedication to both personal growth Hello, and everybody. making a positive Thank you impact. Thank for that warm introduction, Anupama. Over to you, Ronak. Um, yes, so currently we are in Deshpande Foundation. We are trying to help the water situation that is uh, addressing in North Karnataka. So we are based in Hubli and I'm working out of there currently. So yes, I think we can start with the PPT and I'll share my screen in a minute. Yes, yeah, so here in the Ishpande Foundation, we are currently working in agriculture and uh, livelihood development. So if you have looked at the five-year plans of the finance minister and look at the trajectory of how how the uh, story of India's agricultural reform is going on. Previously, it was about um, improving the productivity in the land, but that focus has shifted because now we are having excess production, but we are not having farmers' incomes. Farmers' incomes are not going up as expected. Previously, we thought there's a direct correlation to productivity and farmers' income having been increased exponentially with the productivity being increased, but that's not what happened. So right now, I think the focus, not I think, the focus has shifted to improving livelihood and income generation for the farmers. And that's where the new uh, era has come in. So Teshpande Foundation, uh, we work in agriculture, in North Karnataka and uh, Telangana regions. We have moved towards uh, Maharashtra and we are slowly venturing into Rajasthan as well. So uh, uh, before before I talk about farm ponds as a tool for agriculture, I think uh, for me personally, uh, the journey has been a little ignorant because well, I come from uh, West Bengal where we get a lot of rainfall and Farm ponds is nothing new to me. Like new was not nothing new to me because I have seen farm ponds in every backyard, in everybody's backyard house. Like you have a farm pond, you do fish culture there, you grow your local fish. You it it's just part of the household in the rural and agrarian spaces, right? But when I when I came to Karnataka, I did my bachelor's and I had traveled around. And then I went to Telangana and I traveled around and seen agriculture and how people do it. It is, it is not a direct correlation of getting a farm pond for their farmland in, in these two states. So so when I joined uh, Deshpande Foundation, or DF as we call it in short, so when I heard that farm ponds is a program there, I'm like, isn't, isn't it supposed to be a thing that oh, you already know or you should be doing in a natural way? But... I realized that the ground realities are very, very different as to how things or how the climatic, agroclimatic spaces in North Karnataka and Telangana are. So with that in mind, I started uh, doing my own research. I started talking to farmers. I started going on field visits. And I realized how farm ponds is helping in the upliftment, upliftment of the agricultural economies in terms of they're helping a better quality of life of our farmers and they are helping in the slightly better income generation activities and these are all through just using agriculture they are not even getting into livestock just agriculture and its productivity so yeah I, uh, farm ponds has 
been touted as one of the water harvesting structures currently in our system of the different irrigation practices that we are practicing and it's going to show uh, by collecting rainwater how much of a cro second crop the farmer can cultivate again so farm ponds are for those of you who would want a background of what a farm pond is they are basically nothing they're just a hole in the a hole in the ground and we are just trying to capture all this rainwater that forms falls on the surface of the earth and the surface runoff surface runoffs are the uh, let's say you're in on a road and you see the water streaming down if the road is a little curved or tilted so the entire water that comes running off on that road surface it goes and accumulates somewhere the entire volume of water is surface runoff the movement of water from that slopey plane to somewhere that it gets accumulated and the catchment area is basically the place of accumulation and the land surrounding to it so farm ponds basically collects the water and it stores the water and why is farm ponds necessary in indian agriculture is because we see that <coughs> excuse me we see that our uh, agriculture is heavily dependent on groundwater uh, more than rainwater it was groundwater that we used to depend be dependent on and it have contaminated over the period of time the contamination of groundwater has affected around uh, if i'm not wrong uh, 820 million people as per the last report that i had read and in highly populated areas and states of india which are becoming prone to droughts this further adds to the water stress that they already face furthermore the about 60% of the total indian agriculture the net zone area is under rain fed lands and each year farmers in rain fed areas face various adversities because of the drought situations this situation is actually particularly very critical in south india and we in in the pel that we are currently working in that is north karnataka uh, we have seen that due to the moderate to low rainfall it has become farm ponds has become a necessity in these areas and uh, particularly when i visit fields like and i go through the roads there are barren lands even like till like last week when i was in the field there was barren lands on both sides where the farmer after the onset of monsoons june uh, third week was the official monsoon in our area and they still hadn't planted anything but then i went to the places where the farm ponds was present and their lands was already green they have planted it and they are the saplings have become almost like a bush height and yeah the difference can be seen of a farm pond being present or not being present so yeah as i was saying farm ponds is it's basically uh, reducing the dependence on the rains and it's helping conserve water by conserving water also they are uh, helping in the ground recharge of the uh, water level in the soil and it acts as a bank it acts as a water bank for the farmers where the farmers do not have to particularly be dependent on water only from the rains it they can now use the farm ponds as a bank and they can use the water from the farm ponds whenever they please like how we take out money from a bank so and and yeah obviously it increases the crop yields previously what used to happen is and this is not only in our foundation this is across india that research has shown previously what has happened because of the rain fed nature of agriculture in india around all the land or most of the land i should say is a uh, rain fed and because of that only one crop used to be uh, well cultivated that is the kharif crop the ravi crop was never um, there was the ravi crop as well but it was really uh, due to lack of water for farmers who are in those semi arid regions they could not afford to or do, could not cultivate the second crop so now with farm ponds we are seeing that even 
two crops are becoming very normalized even they are taking three crops as well and yes and the sdg goals that we are trying to address with that is basically with more productivity and more diversification of crops the food that the farmers are producing and the money that they are generating out of it we are trying to have a sustainable system around it uh, just a minute um yeah so for for our intervention in the farm ponds we it's written here it's, we started in 2014 but actually we started experimenting in 2012 itself where we uh were trying to see the proof of concept of how farm ponds would work out and uh, it started as a fully supportive csr project where we wanted to check if the farm pond program was a doable thing or not and slowly slowly became a thing where uh, in 2000 from 2014 onwards we made it into a program where we were doing farm ponds on a regular basis with uh, excavators so this the difference is the farm ponds are a mandated uh, rainwater harvesting structure by the government but uh, the government's uh, farm pond schemes are if i might use the word a little lacking in the sense that because of the uh, they they are not planning out the farm ponds in the optimal areas where the farm ponds can be made so their farm ponds you often you'll often see that when you go to the farm ponds where they have made the farm ponds they have been washed out because the excess rain capacity of the farm ponds has not been realized and the more volume of the water after the excess rain has spilled over and the farm pond has been flooded so uh from 2014 onwards we have been making this program and we started uh with around 300 farm ponds and then we scaled it up every year and by 2018 we were at around 3000 farm ponds and this was this was a joint model where we um had which was funded by df through our CSR grants and then we also made the farmers have some degree of ownership and we asked the farmers to also contribute some monetary benefits to it because we as a foundation have uh, realized that uh, anything given for free is not taken very uh, well or not taken very uh, yeah the spirit is not right when things are given for free so uh, taken for granted yeah and the farm ponds would not be used so we asked the farmers that you also put in some degree of monetary of some degree of money to the program and we'll talk about the how the monetary aspect is and how the microfinancing and the jld support aspect is in the next slides um yeah as of now uh, one farm pond we have different sizes of farm pond depending on the need because each farmer would not have the same farm pond size that he would be using. So the largest size that we currently uh, can help the farmer make is around 100 feet, that is by length, 100 feet by breadth, and 12 feet by depth. And that farm pond holds around 34 lakh liters of water, which he can uh, leverage to use it as a water bank, and he can irrigate his field two to three times. And over uh, by constructing... 8,000 farm ponds till date. The latest data for this year hasn't come out, but if I have seen our um, uh, MIS systems, it's around 10,000, but uh, we still haven't published that because it's not in the annual report yet. So 8,000 is what we have uh, completed till date uh, for the public domain. And for that, around 25,000 has been irrigated. And yeah, as I said, uh, we have moved into the new states, Maharashtra and Rajasthan, and there we are uh, in more than 20 districts 
right now in maharashtra i think four and rajasthan two and the other districts are all in karnataka around 12 and 12 in karnataka four in uh, nizabad that is telangana yes so for the solution part of farm ponds right um just a minute guys i think uh, we can see here that uh, so the, uh, we have three sizes as i told before so these these are the 100 feet by 100 feet and 12 feet 12 feet be the depth of it 12 feet remains constant according to the farmer's need because uh, the depth is something we have experimented with and we cannot really have the uh, we cannot really change it and the other dimensions are depending on the land size of the farmer where the land size depends on uh, the size of the farm pond depends on the land size and it has been it has been uh, demarcated to around 75 feet and 50 feet respectively because the size of the farm pond and the size of the land has to correlate with each other because people who have smaller land holdings they wouldn't prefer uh, bigger farm ponds because they feel that uh, their acreage and their um, amount of amount of uh, crops they can hold for the same land goes down. So these are the kind of the stats for you can sh see on your screens. And 34 lakhs is the highest amount of water that you can get from a 100 by 100 farm pond. And 75. Uh, by 75, that's the secondary size, and 50 by 50 is the smallest size. So these farm ponds are preferred by farmers which have lesser land holding, more likely less than an acre. So all these stats that you see here are pertaining to the um, 100 by 100 feet farm pond. So irrigation of four to five acres, and that is 100 by 100 feet farm ponds, is what achieves that. And as I said before, multi-cropping is uh, something that because of the farm pond has been achievable because previously the water has not been very accessible to the farmers in this region. And uh, yeah, rabi crop is something that, uh, so after the usage of kharif, because kharif is basically you're using rainwater for kharif and then whatever uh, water gets collected in after kharif and that stays in the farm ponds for rabi, it gets accumulated and then it's again used for the rabi crops. One major thing that farm ponds have uh, been struggling with is because the most of the ponds in these schemes that we have seen that the government implements, uh, they do not take into account the life of a farm pond. They are using mostly plastic liners. And because of that, it becomes a stagnant water. So what we have realized is uh, that if you are using stagnant water in the farm ponds, the inlet and outlet becomes a very crucial aspect for it. So because uh, then the water, when when there's when the volume of the water of the farm pond is at optimum or peak capacity, so there's a chance of flooding, which completely breaks the embankment of the farm pond, and then the farm pond is rendered useless. So. Seven years is the average that we have calculated so far for the farm ponds being active, but till they need a, a level of desilting again. Uh, but uh, realistically, it's going on for more than 10 years. But also, I think soil conditions of where you're making the farm ponds is a very important aspect here because uh, you have to consider what kind of soil that you're making, that digging the farm pond in. So our approach technically is uh, we are directly working with the ground panchayats and it's a demand driven approach where the demand is uh, pretty much the farm farmer that tells us that, hey, we want to make the farm pond. So uh, from the farmer perspective, we are getting the demand and the panchayat is helping us 
understand that demand for the farmer perspective and yes so the model that we are currently uh, having we are telling that the farmer will have more contribution but we'll talk about this in the later slide the financial aspects for it so the tech tech is something we are using in farm ponds in terms of how where to make the farm ponds and how to uh, plan the farm pond out um, so we use a uh, google earth to optimally locate where the farm pond would be in terms of the three uh, criteria one is based, the major actually is the elevation of the farm pond and where the natural flow of the water would be at and so we we try calculating where the uh, lowest point would be in a particular land let's say you have a hunt one acre land where the lowest point of the collection of water would be in your land and uh, documentation processing is one major challenge we face so we have incorporated tech in that aspect as well to collect farm data digitally and through an app basically and yeah so nabard helps us in terms of um, collaboration in terms of forming our gazes and they help us also train our farmers in terms of how to have more capacity in making glg models out of it we'll we'll speak about glg models in later slides and sbi is uh, one of the funding partners for the loans that the farmers uh, access in terms of uh, financial uh, well they're part of the finances but this also we'll see in the later slides so yeah um this is this is the construction cycle of a farm pond so uh, where we start with mobilization of farmers and the mobilization happens with our own staff we go to the villages when we give them meetings we hold meetings with the gram panchayat where they mobilize the villagers and they tell us that hey these are the interested candidates and we tell them that there's a program like this or the benefits out of it and everything so there's a village level meeting that happens at that area and um, yes so that's the mobilization process that happens around mid may to february where mid may may june july august it happens all throughout the year and then getting the final applications with the who are the interested farmers is is happens after in that same process for the mid may to feb see this is a jlg thing i was talking about so jlg formation is a uh, jlg is joint library group as you can see here so this is a model by the uh, rural banks that they have developed and what is interesting about this is uh, in jlg formation around a minimum of five four members to a maximum of 10 members can be a part of a jlg so how it works is uh, all the members of the jlg will be equivalently responsible for uh, guaranteeing the risk the credit risk of each members so let's say you take a loan for msbi right and sbi giving one farmer a loan from getting one farm or getting loan for a farmer from sbi becomes a little hard because these farmers individually have very low civil rating so when you create a jlg you, each farmer will approve or guarantee the risk that a loan entails in that jlg model for each other so that way the financial viability for the banks to release a loan to the jlg becomes bigger so the access ease access of banking becomes much more easier for the farmer where they get loans at a much easier process and yeah then then the loans get approved by the bank and then how to fo formulate a jlg how to sustain the jlg then the capacity building training is given and post that our our staff goes the field facilitator who's on df's roles they go and select the uh, uh, talk, they first talk to the farmer to understand where he would like his uh, farm pond because we have nominally seen that uh, the farmer is the most knowledgeable guy for his own land and he he knows better where to make the farm pond than all of us combined he is the expert in his land 
to be honest. So we ask him first that where, where would you like your farm pond? If he has no idea, we then use our uh, app, which show, shows us where the optimal location is depending on the elevation in the farm pond using, using Google Earth data. And then uh, we suggest them that this is the optimal location. And even if he wants to make slight changes, uh, we, we give them give them that flexibility for it. And post uh, post confirmation of the site and everything, uh, we mobilize the Earth Movers JCBs. And uh, depending on the size of the farm pond, it it takes around eight hours uh, for a for a hundred by hundred farm pond to be dug by a JCB. To little more than two to three hours to dig up a fifty by fifty farm pond. So this is where the operational uh, efficiency comes into play, where we used to go farm pond by farm pond in each village, but then we stopped doing that and we started going by <coughs> at a village level because we saw that sending J uh, JCBs to individual locations is not a very good idea for implementation, where uh, if you do it at a village level, you can get more farm ponds done in the same same day at the same scale. So after the digging part is over, we do the bunding of it. That is the sides of the farm pond get a little uh, structuralized so that it doesn't collapse. And uh, then the sloping and inlet and outlet again is here very essential because these are the uh, ways which the surface runoff gets accumulated into the farm pond and the outlet in case that there is an overflow of the farm pond, the outlet it into the feed. Geomapping is something that is done after the farm pond construction is done and it basically tags the, where the farm pond is located and how it is functioning through Google Earth again. So we use um, satellite data to understand if the farm pond is active or not in terms of if the land is fallow, it will show brown right from a satellite. If the land is green and it's making like the crops are being uh, implemented with the farm pond water then it will show green all over. So it's basically image processing we're using. And this post monsoon water storage is something we give them that don't use all of the water all at once and have some in reserve in case there are unforeseen climatic changes or weather changes in that particular year so that you can take another crop. So this is the technology bit of it. We are using uh, data collection from different sources for uh, understanding where the need is more because need if there's a need only then the demand for a farm pond will occur we are not telling anybody hey do this, this is just because this is our program and so digitization is one major part we are playing because a lot of stakeholders are uh, a part of this process so we have to get all documents as properly as possible and uh, Identification, as I said before, that the identification of a farm pond, ideal location of a farm pond is very essential because otherwise the water does not get collected in the proper places. And monitoring crop health is something we are doing through Google Earth again, as I said before. Agri advisory after the farmer sows or before the farmer sows the crops, we tell them on what basis or what ideal crops he can sow in that region. So there's an agri advisory committee with a agricultural scientist with which uh, plans the entire uh, crop cycle for the farmer but again it's up to the farmer if he wants the help or not and GLGs are something we discussed already so yeah for, for the finance bit of it this is how it works out so um, um, the CSR model was something that we had in 2014 so 2014 to 20 we would get grants, CSR grants, and the entire farm pond would be made through a CSR grant. And um, so the entire 80% contribution, the contribution for CSR was around 80% in 2014, which came down to around 30% in 2020. And uh, so our foundation will contribute 20% all throughout. And in 2014, the contribution for farmers would be 50%. So how it works out is currently is that uh, let's say for a 100 by 100 farm pond uh, it costs around 1 lakh rupees and this 1 lakh rupees is born 
majorly through the bank loans uh, for 100 by 100 it costs around 60000 for the uh, jcb cost is the highest cost so jcb costs around 50000 including diesel manpower and everything and um, this uh, costing is availed in terms of bank loan by the farmer by the jlg group and uh, this is happening through sbi so we want farmer to have more participation in the creation of their own farm ponds and that's why we are slowly moving towards the financial model where uh, the farmer has the maximum amount of contribution. Uh, 30,000 is spent from the farmer's own pocket, which is not the loan. This is an immediate expense that is there where he is responsible for the uh, inlet outlet construction and the uh, soil removal costing, uh, which is basically the entire soil has to be removed and that's pretty laborious and labor has to be included in that and uh the twenty thousand or the ten thousand that is remaining that in that money we are giving the entire agri advisory with all the uh bundled services where to make the farm ponds and everything so our exit strategy in this program would be where the farmer gets their entire amount from the bank and uh he he will be the sole owner without just re uh, requiring our foundation as a technical support that's it so this has been the overall impact uh from for the farm ponds this is an old uh, study that we had conducted it's in 2019 so it has been seen that the farm pond farmers there was a baseline and end line people who has farm ponds in their area versus people who does not have farm ponds in that area. So it has been seen that farm uh, income has definitely doubled for farmers. Um, there has been a significant uh, change in the profits for Rabi season versus Kharif season. Around 20% uh, of farmers, uh, around that was around 200 farmers had reported a four times increase but those are those are very unique cases but generally the trend has been it has definitely doubled the incomes and the additional employment that we are seeing generated here, here is basically during the harvesting season the farmers have to employ more labor under Manrega to get uh, the harvest out of their field and yeah crop productivity has increased and because the oh yeah one one major thing is how because of the capacity building of the jlgs and uh because of the nabad support and they know the farmers are aware that they have to repay back the loans and because of this the credit worthiness of farmers have increased way way has gone way way better and their civil ratings and everything has gone like shot through the roof and they are now availing government loans for getting machineries, processing units, and a lot of stuff. And yeah, the other two things, increasing greenery and rich fauna, this, this just happens uh, when whenever there's a farm pond out of the uh, natural water, water availability that uh, turns up in the area. And now is it visible? Yes, yes, I can see the screen and video also. Gabumi, Hang Samandan, Tandra, Namga Bumtai, Berala, Namga Hadata Berala, Bumtai no Kuranamaga, Sautanamaganakara, Hadatai no Namjurutanaki, Namuga Taina. I'm the Crucif Prasana Kurumba, other than now we had to know Crucigo at Porti, other than Jote, Gupasavag, now Hangar Kiseti had to go to Porti. I'm the Dryland Pradesha, one of whom I get Renda Namaga near Nakuliditila. I'm going near Navasha, it's on a Mohala in a tree, but near Harzo Garzogala, Banjur Bumia no Lakagata, other than near Hidilan, the Nambumia no the Yaku, Yuza Aglanta Bumaket. Now, the manner now, all the move of the Algerian word to our big solo birthday. Our Nella Samta to do Yakamakli Jali, Allah is good to Kitila. 
ಈಗ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಸರ ಸರಾಸರಿ ಎವರೇಜ್ ಅಂತ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ದು ಸೂಟ್ ಹೋಗತ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಸೂಟ್ ಹೋಗತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸರಾಸರಿ ಎವರೇಜ್ ಬರೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಈ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ನಾವು ನೀರ್ಗೆ ಹೆಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಪ್ಪ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಅಂತಿದ್ವಿ ಅದಕ್ಕ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬಂಧಿಕರ ಬಂದಾಗ ನೀವು ಇಷ್ಟ ಹಾಕೊಂಡ ಯಾಕೆ ತೊಳೆಯಾಡ್ತೀರಿ ಕೆರಿ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಅದವು ನಿಮ್ ತಾಲೂಕಿಗೆ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಇಂದ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಐತಿ ಯಾಕ ಕೆರಿ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಬಾರ್ದು ನೀವು ನಾವು ಆ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಬಂದಿದ್ರಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕಪಿಲೇಶ್ವರ ಗುಡಿಗೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಕೂಡಿಸಿದ್ರಿ ಇದು ರೆಸ್ಪಾಂಡ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಆಗಿಂದ ಅವತ್ತ ಅದನ್ನ ಹೇಳಿದಾರೆ ಅವರು ಯಾಕ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಊರಾಗ ಒಂದ್ ಮೂರ್ನಾಕ್ ಕೆರಿ ಆಗಿದ್ರಿ ಮತ್ತ ಅವ್ರು ಆಗ್ಯಾವಪ್ಪ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮತ್ತ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ತಾರ ಅನ್ನೋದು ನಮ್ಗು ಒಂದು ಭರವಸೆ ಹುಟ್ಟು ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಲೋ ಚೇಯ ಬಾರ ಜನ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಅನ್ನತಿ ಉಸ್ಕು ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ತರಫ ಸೆ ಸಾಠ ಹಜಾರ ಕಾ ಲೋನ್ ದಿಯ ಎಕ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪಾನ್ ಪೋನ್ ಬನಾನೆ ಪಾನ್ ಪೋನ್ ಬನಾನ ಜೋ ಮಷಿನ್ ಕಾ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಆತ ಸಾಠ ಹಜಾರ ಮೇ ಆತ ತೀನ್ ಪೈಪ್ ಆತ ದೋ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಅವ್ರ ಎಕ್ ಔಟರ್ ಪೈಪ್ ಆತ ಅವ್ರ ಕಲ್ ಪಿಚಿಂಗ್ ಆತ ಲೆವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಹೊಲ ಸಮತಟ್ಟ ಆಗೈತಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಈಗ ಹೊಲ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ನೀರ್ ಆಡತ್ತಿ ನೀರ್ ಆಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಮ್ಗೆ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಫಾಯ್ದ ಅನ್ಸಿತ್ರಿ ನೀರ್ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಆಡತ್ತ ನೀರ್ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಆಡಿಂದ ಈ ಕಡೆ ಕೆರಿ ತುಂಬತಿ ಕೆರಿ ತುಂಬಿಂದ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾದ ನೀರ್ ನಾವು ಹೊರಗ್ ಕಳಿಸ್ತೇವೆ ಈಗ ಅದರಿಂದ ನಮ್ಗ ಮದ್ವಿಗೆ ಈಗ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಹಳ ಚಲೋ ಅನ್ಸಿತ್ರಿ ಈಗ ಅದು ಆ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ನಮ್ಗ ಅದ ಯೋಗ್ಯ ಅನ್ಸೈತಿ ಈಗ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡ್ ಮೂರ್ ಲಾಭ ನಮ್ಗ ಈಗ ಹೊಲ ನೀರು ಅಂತೈತಿ ಕೆರೆ ನೀರು ಅಂತೈತಿ ಮತ್ತ ನಾವು ಇವತ್ ನಿಸರ್ಗಕ್ಕ ಒಂದ್ ಅನುಕೂಲ ನಮ್ಲಿಂದ ಒಂದ್ ನಿಸರ್ಗಕ್ಕೆ ಏನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೇವಪ್ಪ ಅಂತರ್ಜಲ ಒಂದ್ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾಕತ್ತಿ ನಮ್ಲಿಂದ ಒಂದ್ ನಿಸರ್ಗಕ್ಕಾದ್ರೂ ಒಂದ್ ಕೊಡುಗೆ ನಮ್ದ ಒಂದ್ ಅಳಿಲ್ ಸೇವೆ ಅಂತ ನಮ್ದ ಈಗ ಉಳ್ಳಾಗಡ್ಡಿ ಅವನ್ನ ಬಿತ್ತಿದ್ರಿ ಉಳ್ಳಾಗಡ್ಡಿಯಾಗ ಮತ್ತ ಈಗ ಅಂತರ್ ಬೆಳೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ ನಾವು ಮೆಣಸಿನಕಾಯಿ ಹಾಕ್ತಿದ್ದಾರ ಆದ್ರ ಇದು ಮೂರ್ ತಿಂಗಳ ಜೈದರ ಹತ್ತಿ ಹಾಕ್ತಿದ್ವಿ ಜೈದರ ಹತ್ತಿ ಹಾಕಿದ್ರ ಈ ಉಳ್ಳಾಗಡ್ಡಿ ಬರ್ತಿತ್ತು ಉಳ್ಳಾಗಡ್ಡಿ ತಕೊಂತಿದ್ವಿ ಮತ್ತ ಮೆಣಸಿನಕಾಯಿ ಬರ್ತಿದ್ವಿ ಮೆಣಸಿನಕಾಯಿ ತಕೊಂಡ್ ಮೆಣಸಿನಕಾಯಿ ತಕೊಂಡ್ ಮುಂದ್ ಮುಂದ್ ಬ್ಯಾಸಿಗೆ ಇದ ಹತ್ತಿ ಬರ್ತಿತ್ರಿ ಇನ್ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಬೀಜ ಗೊಬ್ಬರ ಎಲ್ಲಾವ ಮತ್ತ ಅತಿ ಮಾಲ ಬಾಳ ಇತ್ತಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂತಂದ್ರ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ರೈತರು ಬಾಳ ಇದ್ರಪ್ಪ ಅಂದ್ರ ಎಫ್ ಪಿ ಓಕ ಕೊಡ್ತೇನೆ ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಅಪೇಕ್ಷೆ ಇದ್ದಂತ ರೈತರು ಬಾಳ ಇದ್ರ ಅವ್ರ ಕುದ್ದಾಗಿ ಬಂದ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಬಂದ್ ಹೋಯ್ತಾರ ಅದರಿಂದ ನಮಗ ಏನ ಸಾರಿಗೆ ವೆಚ್ಚ ಅದ ಎಲ್ಲ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ನಮ್ಗ ಉಳಿತಾಯ ಆಕತಿ ರೈತರಿಗೆ ಒಂದ್ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿದ್ದ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗೈತಿ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಕ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ವತಿಯಿಂದ ಈ ಕೆರಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಕೆರಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿಂದ ಅದರಿಂದ ಆರ್ಥಿಕ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿನು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗೈತ್ರಿ ಈಗ ಒಂದ್ ನಮ್ಮ ನೀರ್ ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ಇದ್ರು ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಇದ್ದಂಗ ಅದ ನಾವು ಯಾವಾಗ ಬೇಕು ಈಗ ಬ್ಯಾಸಿಗೆ ಆದ್ರೂ ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಮಳಿ ಹೋದಾಗನು ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಹೊಲ ಕರೆ ಹೊಲ ಇದ್ರು ಸಹಿತ ನಮ್ಗ ಖುಷಿ ಅನಿಸ್ತೈತಿ ಆ ಹೊಲ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬರ್ದಂಗ ಆಗತ್ತ ಮದ್ಲೆ ಕಲಿತ ಈಗ ನಾವು ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡಂತ ಕನಸನ್ನ ನಾವು ಮದ್ಲೆ ಕೀಡಿಯಾಸದ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ನಮಗ ನೀರ್ ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡೇವಪ್ಪಾ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಒಂದ್ ಅದರಿಂದ ಒಂದ್ ನಿಸರ್ಗದತ್
so uh, the first question is like uh, how the farm ponds are better than wells or tube well, wells as in farm ponds the water evaporation rate is very high and there is no proper source of water so do you want to say something on that correct so uh, wells and uh, the bore wells that people use in the farm pond uh, in the agricultural areas it is uh, in in the area that we are working in the area where you are working is very essential uh basically the water recharge for the land under the water table is something that uh, we are all looking at currently because north karnataka has black cotton soil uh the farm pond uh, even the, if there is the evaporation the percolation of water is not so much at the ground water level so there the uh, evaporation rate versus how much of farm pond is uh, how much of water is prevalent in the farm pond it's a very small give or take so there is not much complaint in regards to that so here farm ponds work better because well the rain or rain is very irregular and in that way yeah wells and bore wells are not very essential in this area so where you are working you have to choose where the geography is and the soil conditions of the place before you choose to make a farm pond Okay. Next question we have is: As I heard from my villager, due to farm ponds, it increases the salinity in farmland. Is it so? True? The sal again. This again is tied to the point that I made earlier. The salinity of the farm pond, or the salinity of the soil, will only increase if if you are making the farm pond in areas where the soil conditions are already saline, because the solubility uh, of water. because of farm ponds being there the solubility of water with the uh, land the mixture will happen and then the salinity will increase so again the soil conditions where you're making the farm pond is really essential so technically farm ponds is seen as a measure for uh, for the places where the groundwater is already very contaminated okay so when places where the groundwater is already very contaminated farm ponds is using the rain water as a mechanism for irrigation so let's say uh, i stay in bengal so uh, arsenic uh, being present in the ground water is a major challenge in bengal so um, there farm ponds people use it for irrigation fishing everything and and this is from mostly the rain water that comes 